in our nation's capital to watch the Washington Redskins take on the San Francisco 49ers on Monday Night Football. Tonight, we go behind closed doors with a TV team that each week turns the game into an extravaganza. So, are you ready for some football? This is an American television institution. ABC's Monday Night Football. It's a big time, huh? It is a traveling road show, and, well, the viewer is really the recipient of this. There's always that added incentive to play well because you know that everybody around the league is watching you. So now, as an announcer, I'm thinking that, oh, my goodness, everybody's listening to me. For 29 years, millions of Americans have made football on Monday night a television habit. What you can't see from your living room is what happens behind closed doors as over 100 people and millions of dollars worth of equipment barnstorm the country for five months. We joined this traveling circus on Monday in Denver and ended up in Washington, D.C. one week later. On Tuesday, the production trucks headed toward our nation's capital while the announcers returned home to study the next set of game tapes. On Wednesday, 49ers quarterback Steve Young was interviewed in San Francisco for the open of next Monday's show. Now you better join in because it's going to happen. The tapes were flown back to New York for a Thursday evening edit. Now you're wearing it, you better, you better join in because it's going to happen. The first wave of technicians arrived in Washington on Friday, and Saturday morning they began to set up their cameras and test their gear. Director Craig Janoff and producer Ken Wolf arrived on Sunday morning to check out the location. The announcers arrived that afternoon in time to attend separate meetings with each head coach behind closed doors. These confidential meetings, like this one with Redskins' Norb Turner, give the core Monday Night Football team the inside word on players, injuries, and even specific plays. Can you start, Norv, and tell us uh, who's not going to suit up tomorrow night? Yeah, uh, Milstead. Skip Hicks. Jeff is, I'd say, uh, looking at him move, he's about 75 percent in terms of moving. The broadcast team then traveled across town to San Francisco 49ers Hotel to meet with head coach Steve Mariucci. We have to walk a fine line. In other words, like we've already met with the Redskins coach. Right. Uh, and Norv told us, like, the players he's not going to suit up. He told us some strategic parts of what he plans on doing tomorrow night. We can't in any way uh, yeah. let any of that go to the 49ers. Right. Oh, yeah. What happens is you, you get into the flow of a game, you, you have a plan going in, but then you get into the game and then and then you try to dial up what you think is going to work. I think our plan is just to play defense first and see what, what kind of pressure we can get. While the announcers headed back to their hotel to finish their homework, Ken Wolf and Craig Janoff returned to the stadium for a full technical run-through. To simulate players on the field and the announcers in the broadcast booth, ABC hires local college interns as stand-ins. Tucked underneath the stadium are the technical guts of the game. These three fully loaded trucks serve as a mobile control room. How many cameras? How many mics? I shouldn't say this. We're up to probably about 24, 25 cameras. You know, I always lie about that, though, because the budget people will be coming in and trying to cut me back. Although he directs from a windowless truck, Craig has the best seat in the house, a video wall of 85 monitors showing the action from every conceivable angle. Three, Roll 85 two, and slowly, Joey, one, do it, slowly. Ready, 88. Out. Stand by to roll 88. And roll 88 and dissolve 88. Ready, blimp. Stand by to dissolve blimp. Blimp, center it up, blimp, we center it up. Along, and dissolve the blimp, blimp's up, ready, 14A. Push in, push in, ready, 14A, and dissolve to 14A. Matt Dub 2. The stress is obvious. What do you think your blood pressure is during the game? Well, my blood pressure, I, I don't want to talk about that because, you know, it's important to me. I'm, I, I'm a carbo loader, I work out. It's important for me physically and emotionally because there are times, have been times over the years, where you get a little dizzy, a little faint, you know, you're up and about and you're. You're moving pretty good, and it's important that you can get through it. After the two-hour tech rehearsal, Craig handed over the headset and let me have a shot. 12, can you hear me? You're going to have track. My assignment, to direct the opening sequence of the show, which includes up to 14 tape machines, 22 cameras, and graphics. You're on your own. What's next? 
Uh, dissolved, a ready 18. Dissolved 18, uh, 13, excuse me. Oh, okay, I can do that. I right, stand by on right, camera. By. We want to bring the guys on camera. Stand by in the booth, 20. And take 20. And take, Trent's right there. Take us. Take them. Take 12. All right, and Matt in uh, one. Next is... 13. Is 13. Is all the 13? Hand right. Eight to commercial, seven. Six to commercial, five. All right, ready, four, 1,000. Three. Roll 1,000. Dissolve one. for 1,000. Not bad. Very nice. You don't need me anymore. That's cool. <laughs> Game day begins with a series of meetings for the announcers, the camera crew, and the production team. The announcers get to the stadium three hours before game time. I went behind closed doors with Al Michaels for the ride. When I was a kid anyway, and I started thinking about this, I mean, that was the part of the business that was the most appealing. You go to the game, you get in for free. You get to get meet to the eat, players. You get to meet you, the whole thing. I mean, it's just wonderful. You're on television, and and, and there's, there was, there's nothing about it that, that isn't exciting. And you know what, Joan? Those things are still great. He then joins the other announcers as they work the field, trying to glean any last-minute inside information that will make the broadcast better. You find out these, these little tidbits, and very often, that makes the difference between just somebody making a tackle and, hey, listen to this story. Isn't this fascinating? Don't hug. Don't know, kiss sorry. me. Dan, no, how are you? Do that. I'm there. Nice to meet you. How you doing? Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice nice to meet you. Right. We like to look at them up close and talk to them, and, and they like to say some things to us. This is a big time. The lights are bright, and if they can get their name mentioned, hey, that's good stuff. Monday night football sideline reporter Leslie Visser has covered the NFL for 20 years. So you always wanted to do this? Yes, I wanted to be a sports writer from the time I was 10 years old, and I was really blessed that my parents didn't say, oh, girls, don't do that, you can't do that. Do you think you'd be able to tell if he's lost anything since the Junie? I probably could, but I wouldn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone says, well, who do you want to win? I only want a close game. I want it to come down to the wire. That's what we're in the business for. Game time. Behind me, Al Michaels, Dan Deardorff, and Boomer Esiason are alive to 50 million Americans. This is when all the hard work by hundreds of people behind the scenes take center stage. Levy, who played his college ball in Arizona from the The play-by-play -play announcer, Al Michaels, paints a verbal picture of each play as it happens. Young gets hit as he throws from the blind side. But Dan Deardorff and Boomer Esiason are the analysts. If Al paints the picture, their job is to color it in. That's Lang, number 90. Watch him get up. I don't think it's how Lady hit him. It's that he drove him into the ground intentionally. When the announcers come on camera, this is what you see at home. What you don't see is the behind-the-scenes support staff of stage managers, production assistants, and technical crew. Closest to the broadcast team is a statistician who keeps Al Michaels updated on the numerical facts of the game. So Garrison, who had the biggest day of any running back last week, follows it up and he's now up to 106 yards tonight. Next to him is the spotter. His job is to act as a second pair of eyes and communicate with Al using a unique information board called a spotting chart. Basically what it is is all the players on both teams, offense and defense, other side has just the opposite on the other teams. Um, all three announcers have this and they utilize this to follow along. It has height, weight, what year the players were drafted, what the particular statistics were for the year. Kelly and Al have perfected a shorthand language filled with hand signals so Al can continue the flow of the broadcast without looking down at his notes. So, for example, if Trent Green is in the game, he throws a pass to Michael Westbrook. It's tipped by Lee Woodall and picked off then by Antonio Langham. I'll just follow from Green to Woodall, show that it was intended for Westbrook, and then point to Antonio Langham. And Al will see all of this as it goes on, but he'll glance down just to confirm names and that sort of thing. Over the middle, and it's a deflected pass. It looked like it was uh, Junior Bryan who got a hand up to knock it away. As the game unfolds, producer Ken Wolf is communicating with everyone involved in the broadcast. What's next? 83, Craig. Ready 83. Langham's reaction. Including Leslie Visser, who's in the center of it all. 
You're down here, you hear it. Describe it to me. Most people don't understand the noise and the chaos of professional football. <laughs> It's, it's not a game for people in short pants. When the producer calls for an instant replay, over a dozen people behind this closed door spring into action. All the action on the field is recorded on individually numbered videotape machines, each with its own operator. In the time it takes a player to get up off the turf, any one of a dozen technicians are prepared to rewind their tape, ready to roll the best angle to illustrate that play. 85, okay, 10, 86, 10, 93. 85. 85, 40, 85 machine. 86 is next. In the announce booth, Al, Boomer, and Dan await instructions from Ken Wolf as to which replay or series of replays they'll show. Yes, yeah, so here it is, guys. Watch. It definitely One comes account. out. Well, I think oh. he's going to take a shot from the best defensive tackle in football, Bryant Young. There's so much chaos with people yelling loud and in your headsets and all these different angles and monitors. I'll, sometimes I'll leave the truck here at night and I'll say, who won the game? In addition to choosing replays, Ken must fit over 75 commercials and network promos into the telecast. We have a person that I'm communicating with on the sidelines. He's called Orange Sleeves because he's wearing orange gloves uh, up to his elbow. And he's basically communicating with the referee and saying, hey, next opportunity, we need to take a break. So he tells you that he wants to go to commercial. What do you physically do out here to make the game stop? I actually step out on the field, cross my arms over my chest, and make eye contact with the head official. We want to do a commercial. He sees me, points to the ground. Commercial after the punt. I'll report that to Kenny. 95 to commercial, Greg. Three. Two, one, two, one. In the end, the coordination between the announcers in the booth, the production team in the truck, and the technical crew on the field is what sets Monday Night Football apart. That teamwork was never more evident than on one very emotional Monday night in Dallas, Texas. It's September 15th, 1997, the last minute of the Eagles versus the Cowboys. And all of a sudden, Dallas has the lead, and then, I don't know, something told me that it's Monday night, it's crazy, and sure enough, here comes Philadelphia, and it's back down the field. From the 50, it's a four-man rush. Detmer, he may have been across the line, and oh, it's caught at 30 yards. No. It's taken there oh, by no. Max Rick-Carroll no. He takes it to the front. When crazy things happen, you know, you react like a fan does, and you just can't help yourself. You know, Philadelphia finds themselves in a position where really a relatively easy play wins the ball game. Tommy Hutton to hold it, to win the game for the Eagles. And oh, the history of oh, oh. it, and Hutton loses the football. Oh, pull it out, no. pull it out, no. pull it out. No. Oh, ready to fire, take five, take five, ready two, ready two, take two. Pull it out, two, pull it out, ready two. Dissolve two, pull it two, pull it two, pull it two, ready five, ready three, dissolve three, ready six. Six. Craig, let's go 87. Ready 87. Dissolve 87. 87. Stand by the 